Good afternoon, Signor Della Rebbia. Good afternoon, Alberto. I came as you requested. But why did you insist that we meet here at this lonely place? Well, Alberto, what is it? The matter is highly important, sir. At most mysterious, suppose you explain. procession of the man who was just murdered. He is being buried without priest or ceremony here in this wild, unhallowed valley. Yes, in Corsica, according to custom, a murdered man must be buried at the very spot where he falls. His body cannot be removed and taken to hallowed ground for proper burial until his death has been avenged. This is the daughter of the murdered man. Her name is Columba. The only thing that sustains her in this hour of grief is her heart's vow for vengeance. Yes, vengeance and hatred are well known here. The island of revenge. So Corsica has been known for centuries because Corsica is the birthplace of the death bow, the vendetta. Is that word strange to you? The word vendetta means the obligation and duty to seek vengeance. Yes, the duty to kill in revenge. According to custom, this duty always falls upon the eldest son of the family. So the word vendetta really means the solemn obligation and duty of the eldest son to avenge any insult or injustice committed against his family. He must seek this revenge against the eldest son of the family which committed the crime. Therefore, the climax and fulfillment of a vendetta is a duel to the death between these two men, each the eldest son of his family, all in accordance with age-old custom. The murdered man lived in this village. His daughter believes that he was murdered by the rich Baraccini family. She has finally succeeded in bringing the Baraccinis to trial. And here they are. This is Vincenti, Alberto, and their father, the honored Signor Baraccini. He is the mayor of the village and one of the most powerful men in Corsica. The trial is being conducted by a French prefect, the dignified representative of the French who rule Corsica. And this man is on the witness stand. His name is Arrigo. If we believe the story he has told, the Baraccinis must be innocent, very innocent. Proceed. But this man is lying, perjuring himself, making a mockery of this court. Silence, or I cite you for contempt. You must realize that this is a court of justice. Justice? You mean Baraccini justice. They own the court, the countryside, the prefect. Remove this woman. I must warn Signorina Della Rebia again about her conduct. And we will continue only if she restrains herself. Proceed. As I said, Your Worship, the bandit Padrino asked me to deliver the letter. The one there on your desk. This I did. 
to Signor Antonio della Rebbia. That is all, Monsieur le Prefect. Thank you. Mia Baracini? I have very little to add. Nothing I haven't said many times before. Signor Antonio de la Rebbia had been acting as arbitrator in a dispute over land rights. That letter summoned him to a rendezvous in the valley, close to the village. There, my late lamented friend, Signor Antonio de la Rebbia, was shot in the back by an unknown assailant. Doubtless one of the bandits. We found Padrino's letter on Signor de la Rebbia's body. As mayor of Petronera, I filed the letter in the town records and reported the matter to the French authorities at once. That letter is a forgery. Pedrino loved my father. He would not lure him to his death. Signorina, the sources are not proof. We have here a letter. It seems conclusive. What evidence have you to the contrary? The oath of Pedrino, an honorable Corsican, made to me at the grave of my father that he did not write the letter. Come, come, this is childish. The oath of a bandit. You are a Frenchman. You cannot understand the oath of a Corsican. and produce this honorable bandit as a witness. A man with a price on his head whose very life is forfeit if he appears before you. Monsieur le Prefect, if you please. Yes, Mayor Baraccini? The signorina is allowing her grief to run away with her judgment. It does her credit. Her father, my old friend, would be proud. But it has nothing to do with justice. As far as I can see, she has no new evidence to offer. Quite true. So, Monsieur le Prefect, if you are satisfied... No, no, I... Silence. I declare the hearing to be now and finally at an end. We find that, according to the evidence, Antonio de la Rebia came to his death at the hands of an unknown bandit still at large. And we hereby absolve from all blame the Baracinis. Guido, Alberto, and Vincente. Against my better judgment, I went to law. French law, which... which is useless to Corsicans. Orso, my brother, will soon be home. His ship has already left Marseille, and in a few short days, there will once more be a man at the head of the Della Rebia family. Then assassins will walk more carefully. The guilty will be punished. And my father's body can at last be removed to hallowed ground. It is known as the Maquis. Here, the French authorities dare not enter, for true Corsicans despise French law and refuse to obey it. They respect one law only, the death code of the vendetta. Those who run afoul of the French law must live here in the Maquis. The French call them bandits and hunt them down if they venture out of the Maquis but most Corsicans honor and protect them.
It grows. And well it may, watered by a woman's tears. Padrino, she has had enough of sadness. Look, signorina, for you, a little fat barracini. <laughs> Thank you, Brando. <laughs> we have brought something for you too, Uncle Brando, in the saddlebags. Oh, good. And something not in saddlebags. News. Orso has sailed from France. Your brother? Must all the news I hear have blood in it? Is that all you have to say? Your brother was well off in France. Why did he not remain there? Padrino, I'm sorry. But a strange rage seizes me when I hear ill spoken of my brother. I... I'm not myself. I spoke no ill of Orso himself. But I am sorry he is coming home. When will he reach Corsica? Your brother. Oh, that's for the winds to answer. This week, God willing. This week? Signorina, meet him at the landing place. I beg you, send him back to France. To France? But I've dreamed of his return a thousand nights. For many years we've had our home here. Our lands, our sheep. Your graves. Do you want Orso buried within a week after he lands? In less than a week after Orso's landing, there will be a Baraccini buried. Very well, signorina. But you may need us still. Send the usual message. Thank you, Padrino, again and always. But from now on, I claim protection from no man but my brother. Tonight, for the last time, I ride back from the hills to an empty house. I can almost see or so now, as he stands on the deck of the ship, as he stands tall and strong beside the mast, the wind in his hair, his eyes glowing like tiny lamps lighted by his heart, as only a man's eyes glow when he has turned his face at last toward home and one that he loves. makes you so strangely quiet. Thoughts of home? I can hardly believe this is our last night on board ship. Nor I. To think that four days ago I had never seen you. And then when I first saw the moonlight on your face, I felt I had known you always. It's been so perfect, this voyage. A ship all our own. <laughs> if it only were, then we could stop it. And let these days and nights Sky and sea and moonlight go on forever. Lydia! Yes, Father? Poor dear, he's finished his bottle of port and he's getting sleepy. I'm afraid I must go below and put him to bed. Good night, Orson. Wait. There is some port left in my bottle. Perhaps your father would accept a nightcap. And leave his only daughter alone at night on the deck of a foreign boat. Oh, no, Lieutenant, I don't think so. But you might try it. of honor for oh, my son blood red is its ribbon redder yet the shirt I wore for oh, my son cherish my why did you stop I give the Rebecca to no one the what oh as you predicted, your father refused my offer of a nightcap. Indignantly, I'm sure, Lieutenant. Quite so. Insulted, you return, leaving him with the bottle. Tell me, what is a rimbeco? A what? A rimbeco. Where did you hear that word? 
just a word that came into my mind. It may not have been that word at all. It may have been something quite different, like, uh, like... I don't know of any word that might be mistaken for it. I'm sure there must be many, after all, to the unaccustomed ear. You, you take words like, uh, Sirocco and tobacco and Morocco. Stop that humming! Sorry. Please accept my apologies. The Rimbeko is the... The Rimbeko is the most mortal insult one can offer a Corsican. The Rimbeko means you have not avenged yourself. You have not washed away the stains upon your... honor. I'm extremely sorry that I remembered the word. Oh, please don't mention it. The Corsicans have a very large honor that you will find for such a small country. about my people. But if you knew the hatreds without end, the vendettas, duels to the death. But how is it possible? I've always thought the Corsicans were devoutly religious people. Oh, the church forbids the vendetta. Yet its poison prevails between individuals, between families. Be on your guard, I am on mine. Vendetta, that's the beginning. The end is a stiffening body on the blood-wet ground. Forgive me. I spoke thoughtlessly. It is only because I hate fighting and death and inhumanity. And so do I. But you, Lieutenant, I never heard a soldier speak like that. I've often dreamed of meeting someone like you. A man who hates war and violence and death as much as I do. A man who believes that life... That life is a good comrade. Yes. Ahem. <clears throat> Perhaps I'm intruding. No, sir. But you are, Father. The lieutenant was just beginning to tell me that... You mustn't believe a word he says, child. Not a word. The lieutenant's are notoriously unreliable in the moonlight. <laughs> used to be one myself, you know. Come along to bed now. Oh, but, Father, it's not really late. But, daughter, it may be really early tomorrow morning when we land if this breeze holds. Come along. <laughs> Good night, Austin. Good night. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night, sir. Happy dreams. I am also Antonio de la Rebia. Signor de la Rebia? Do you have accommodations for us? But yes, signor. The best in Ayaccio. Isn't she striking? She must be from the hills. The nobility, perhaps. How can you tell? Oh, by her clothes, her manner, and... Excuse me. you expect me to? When I last saw you, you were... Senor Orso? Yes, Tico. This is the master of our house. No, no, no. None of that, boy. On your feet. Colombo, we have some friends. A 
forgive me, but I was so surprised. This is my sister, Colomba. Colomba, Colonel Sir Thomas Neville, and his daughter, Miss Lydia Neville. How do you do, his young sister? For a moment, I thought that you... I've been so looking forward to meeting you. Why? Well, also has told us so many interesting things about you. You told them about me, you... You were thinking of me. Why, of course. Now, come inside, Colomba. We shall have dinner. And then we will tell you all about our voyage. As you wish or so, but I've brought you a horse. We can be in Pietranera by nightfall. Pietranera by nightfall? Oh, no, no. Tomorrow will be soon enough. Very well, Orso. But Lydia didn't care at all for Constantinople. Too many stray dogs, all of them starving. I couldn't bear to see them, poor things. And the smells, I suppose I shouldn't mention it, simply overpowering. We only stayed for a few days, and then we went on to Greece. Athens was beautiful. We explored the Parthenon by moonlight. And I shot pheasants in the hills. Great spot. Is this all you ever do, travel? Do you not love your native land? My dear young lady. I have never been away from Corsica in my life. I never want to go away. Shall we uh, smoke her now? That's a very good idea, my boy. Well, if the, if the ladies will excuse us. Certainly, Father. That's a deuced good meal, I must say. While we were in Paris, Father and I, we heard so much about Corsica from some people we met that we decided to come here at once. Were they Corsican? The people? No, French. The French. What do they know about Corsica? To them, we are a lot of uncivilized bandits. Oh, no, I assure you. They spoke very highly of the Corsican people. Mademoiselle, the French do not understand. I have a friend, Padrino. He's from one of the finest Corsican families and was a student of Pisa University in Italy. He came home to visit his honored parents and he was given a humiliating insult by a man from his home village. Padrino gave him the challenge, all fair. And then killed him. Killed him? Of course. Padrino himself would have been killed otherwise. Now he's called a bandit. The French authorities have put a price on his head. A Corsican bandit, mademoiselle, is a man of honor. A man who, having had a member of his family killed in a vendetta, has killed in return. But in England, we, we think of a bandit as a robber, a highwayman. Padrino is the most honest of men. To the French, he is a criminal. So you see, they understand nothing, these French. I can see you really love your country and your people. Yes, I love Corsica and her ancient customs. Everything around us reminds us of our ancestors. We even have songs to help us remember. Songs that remind us of injustices, of cruelties, of... Murders unavenged. Our balatas. A form of lament, are they not? They serve to remind any living member of a family that a vendetta has not ended. They serve to remind the eldest son that... Would you like me to sing one for you? Why, well, I... I... Is there any more coffee? Father, oh my father, your wounds drip red, cold and hard the pillow neath your head. Son, oh, out Everything you tell me about your island interests me as a sportsman. And, uh, and otherwise, too, of course. Strangely enough, I've never shot a big horn sheep. It's a trophy I'm looking forward to acquiring. Father, oh my That's a juicy, depressing song, my boy. Pardon me, Colomba. I was singing for... I am quite aware of what you are singing, and for whom. I should have preferred a ballad of welcome. For one of our island's love songs. It's getting quite late. Shall we retire, Colomba? It's a very good idea. If my brother wishes, then let's say good night, then. Good night. What fun.
fine weapon. Are they yours also? No, sister. They are Colonel Neville's. They're wonderful. In Corsica, we do not have such fine weapons. Oh, you really admire them. It's refreshing to meet a young lady who's interested in guns and not terrified of them. No offense, Lydia. That's the latest model of a Manton. It's beautiful. Is it not, Orso? Yes, it is. It is. Magnificent. Ah, oh, then that settles it. Your brother's been so exceedingly charming to us, strangers in a strange country, that I was wondering how I could show him my gratitude. Also, will you accept this gun as a slight token of my appreciation? Oh, I... I wouldn't think... Oh, my dear boy, it's nothing. I have many guns. But perhaps some other present might be more appropriate for Oh, no, nothing would please him more. You're a very fine and generous man, Colonel Neville. My brother would not offend you by refusing such a wonderful gift. A lady after my own heart, this. Also, you have a charming sister. I don't know how to thank you, sir. Then say no more about it. Now I will say good night. Pleasant dreams to all who have an easy conscience. Good night, Father. Good night, Lydia, dear. Good night, also. Good night, Lydia. I must say, Colonel, the <laughs> generosity of your gift overwhelms me. Nonsense, my boy. And yet, in a way, it makes things much easier for me concerning Lydia and yourself. Oh, how's that? Uh, I mean, now I can feel free to invite you and Lydia to my home village, Pietonera, where the hunting is excellent. Oh, is it? Oh, no, 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 my boy. We, we couldn't possibly intrude on you like that. Oh, I insist. Why, all along I wanted to invite you, but <laughs> I felt perhaps you might think me presuming on so short an acquaintance. Well, in that case, we'd be delighted. Honored to come. Well, the honor is mine, sir.
de la Rebia, on behalf of the people of Pietradera, I welcome you back to your home village. You see how wrong you were, Colomba. We salute you, not only as a member of the great and celebrated de la Rebia family, which is honor enough, but also as a hero of Waterloo. Thank you, Mayor Baraccini. You do me great honor, sir. Monsieur le Prefect, also de la Rebia. Champ, Monsieur. Your Excellency. And you remember my two sons, Vincente and Alberto. I... I can't find words to tell you how touched I am by this welcome. How moved by the sight of my home village after ten years. Mayor Baricini. I assure you again of my entire goodwill in this matter, sir. Excellent, monsieur. And now, Mayor Baracini, I'll leave the town in your capable hands. I will never betray my trust, Monsieur le Prefect. Hello. Tico, go find Brando and Padrino and tell them to meet me tonight. to go and look around and you had vanished. I do not appreciate farce. Well, a comic opera, perhaps. But we do have guests. Forget your guests a moment, if you can. The prefect has left and taken all of his gendarmes with him. The town is in the hands of the Baracino. Also, you must be on your guard. Columba, why, you're trembling. Oh, come, little sister. It's broad daylight. The square is full of people. There is no danger. I know. You have been alone too long. You had a great shock and no one to turn to. Yes, much too long. It's over now. Oh, so I'm so glad you're back. But it's not over. The Baracini... No, sister, please. No more of that. Ever since I landed, you have been grumbling about the Baracini. <laughs> they have been family friends for years. They've turned the town out to welcome me. To avoid suspicion. Colomba, to please me, will you put aside this strange fear? Just for today. After all, the whole district is gathered to dance in my homecoming. We have two most charming guests. I particularly hope that you would be gracious to Miss Neville. You should never have brought her to Pietronera. Sister. It is the custom of English gentlewomen to faint at the sight of blood. Blood? Believe me, Colomba, this is unhealthy. An obsession. You must believe me also. Our father was murdered by the Baraccini from ambush as you will be. Now, Colomba. In the case of our father's death, I wrote you months ago that I sent for the records of the hearings, including all the testimony of the various witnesses. I read it all very carefully. The hearings were freely and openly conducted. The evidence was conclusive. Padrino's letter lured our father to the place where he met his death. Padrino wrote no letter. It was a forgery contrived by the Baraccini to save their skins. Colomba, aren't you a little blinded by your grief? Sister, what is it? We never had differences before. We always thought alike, played together, dreamed the same dreams. When I left, you were 15. Long legs, torn stockings, laughing eyes, your hair a windy halo. 
throughout my exile in strange cities, at peace and in battle, I listen to your laughter in my heart. I haven't seen your smile since I came back to Corsica. I'm sorry, Orso. It's not because I'm... I'm not filled with happiness to see you. Happiness? In black? I'm sure our father would have wished you to put off mourning before now. Remember how he loved you best? In white, with a little cross at your throat and thill flowers in your hair. And you are so. Did you love me so? Of course. Here's what we shall do. Next week, we shall turn Ayacho inside out to find new dresses. I shall send for silks to Rome. And this summer, we shall have parties and dancing in the great hall. Who knows but what we'll find someone who will make you really happy. Someone? Oh, someone very special. You have to be very handsome, very wise, and very kind to be your husband. My husband? Yes, naturally. You're young and very beautiful. It's time you turn your thoughts to marriage and to family. It's nice to see people so happy. Yes, isn't it? I wish you were happier also. At dinner, you were looking very troubled. Sometimes I think I've lost all taste for happiness. Perhaps I was a soldier too long, 10 years. I know, father, too. When I sailed for home, I was very low in spirit, and the world looked dark and unfriendly. But for once, fortune smiled on me. You were aboard. Fortune was kind to me, too, also. When I stop and think that Father and I almost went to Morocco instead of Corsica, I... We would have met some way, Lydia. I'm certain of it. Somehow I just can't think of our meeting her. Sheer accident. my horse. I must leave at once. What is it, darling? Nothing of any great monetary value, I assure you. Beautiful. And very old. Yes. It was my mother's. Also has something to ask you, Father. Yes, I thought he might. Why, a blind man could have seen it coming a mile off. <laughs> you didn't look so white about the gills, my boy. It's quite all right. Colonel Neville, I don't quite know what to say. Then don't say anything. Congratulations, my boy. You're a very fortunate young man. <clears throat> my dear signorina, it is not fitting that you should be away from home at this hour without an escort. We should have come to Pietronera. <laughs> Listen to him. Never mind, Padrino. That is a small matter. My brother is in grave danger, and he will not listen to me. I cannot even get him to talk with me alone. But it is very simple, signorina. If he is in trouble, we will come in and guard him. Who will guard us? No. No, it is much more complicated, much more serious than that. My brother is going to marry this English woman. Adel Arabia, marry a foreigner. It is because he has been away so long, he's forgotten his own people. But he will remember. Not if he marries this woman. Brando, we must make him understand. We must prove to him that the Baraccini murdered his father, and at once. Brando and I will slip into Pietranera while it is still dark and take the Baraccini to Orso. Even if we live through it, what good is that? We will make them talk. It is not so hard to do. No, no, Padrino. This, this brother of mine believes only in European law. Everything must be legal. Legal? 
Oh, this is very sad. There is a solution. But it is so dangerous, I hesitate to mention it. You've been so kind and so loyal. Columba, I assure you. Please, Padrino. You and Brando have done too much for me already. And we are willing to do more. What is it you wish? To convince Orso, we must have the prefect. The prefect? If he could be in Pietra Nera tonight. But, Signorina, that is impossible. Difficult, yes. But not impossible. Wait, please, listen to me. The perfect is in Ayacho, surrounded by his gendarmes. Look, I'm not a coward, but I like this head of mine. I do not want him blown up for nothing. You will excuse him, signorina. He is a little thick in his skull. Leave everything to me. The prefect will be in Pietranera tonight. Padrino, you are a true friend. Oh. Uncle Brando, I am ashamed of you. I'm alive, he's ashamed of me. If I was dead, he would be proud of me. Brando. But grumbling does not deceive anybody. Oh, it's not that I'm afraid to die, but we are just asking to be shot. <laughs> no, no, my friend. We are free men riding at ease. Remember that. Also, the gendarmes have never laid eyes on us. And in these cloaks. We look like men from the hills coming in to uh, see the capital. The gendarmes are not all fools. <laughs> look who's coming. I beg your pardon. We are strangers here. Could you direct us to the inn? Straight ahead. You can't miss it. Thank you. Don't make it worse than it is. I just wanted to prove my point. From now on, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Remember, you are a servant now. Waiting for your master who has business in the inn with the prefect. Sit at ease. <laughs> Sit at ease, he says. Gendarmes, thick as freeze on a mongrel dog. I'll be like a sitting duck with a clipped wing. All you do is grumble. I would rather have you helping me than anybody in Corsica. Uh. See you, senor. We will cross that bridge later. Official business for my home village. Very important and very urgent. You know this man? Yes. He's a young nobleman from Bonifacio. Arturo de la Casa. Wait here. May I go back to my desk now, senor? I, I am very busy. Are you a good Corsican? Yes, senor. And do you want to remain alive? Yes, believe me. This way, monsieur.
Monsieur le Préfet. I understand you have urgent business, Senor. Make it free. I have come in behalf of a dear friend of mine, Orso de la Rebia. Orso de la Rebia? You certainly have not come to talk to me about his father's case. It has been closed forever. It has become necessary to prove to Orso that the evidence was false, a forgery. Senor, you obtained an interview with me by fraud. Please go. Is there no way I can persuade you to listen? No. Or shall I call the gendarme? You leave me no alternative. I am called Padrino. Padrino? Yes. Padrino the bandit. And I must ask you to come back to Pietranera with me. Pietranera, but Please. I... Words are useless, I assure you. We will walk out of here like men going about some normal business. Do you understand? Very well, senor. And we will keep our little secret between us. Mistakes, Monsieur le Préfet. I know that all you have to do is raise an eyebrow to the gendarme, or perhaps a wink, and I know that will mean my death. But I regret to say it will also mean death for you. I understand. Monsieur. Rando. This is His Excellency. The Prefect. I will see that you men go to the guillotine for this. Please, Monsieur le Préfet. One thing at a time. Colomba, this must stop. You mean you do not want me to pray? I mean you must get rid of this morbid state of mind. Where have you been? Why do you ask? I have been waiting for you for hours. I have something important to tell you. I know. The English woman. Why do you refer to her in this way? I'm ashamed of your rudeness. And I am ashamed of your light-heartedness and your convenient memory. Have you forgotten everything? You have said enough, Colomba. I shall say what I please. I can no longer acknowledge you as head of this house if you shirk your duties and consort with the men who murdered your father. You think of nothing but this foreign woman who wants to take you back to her country and make a false Englishman out of you. Colombo, I warn you. A Corsican who allows the body of his father to lie in unhallowed ground unhallowed while he... Unhallowed ground? What are you talking about? We buried him where he fell, according to Corsican custom. His body must lie there until he is avenged. Or have you even forgotten that? Why wasn't I told? You did not ask. Your mind has been 
filled with this English woman. Orso. Orso, listen to me. Our father was murdered, shot in the back by the Baraccini. Still this obsession. Stop it, Colomba. No. I will make you listen. I will follow you all over the house, shouting our disgrace. Sister! I'm telling you the truth, Orso. Our father had been acting as arbitrator in all the land disputes. His decisions were honest. No one could influence him, not even the rich Baraccini. He decided against them time after time. He believed in justice for all. But the Baraccini cared nothing for justice. They wanted to rule or ruin. One man stood in their way. Our father. They killed him. This is not proof. They hired a lying witness. They perjured themselves. They forged a letter. Padrinos. He wrote no such letter. I have heard all this before. Our father went to his death in the Valley of the Oaks, suspecting nothing. Someone hidden in the mucky shot him in the back. One of the bandits. Why should they shoot him? For what? He looked after their children. He protected them. One of them might have had a grudge against him. They all loved him. No one had any reason to kill him except the Baraccini. But the Baraccini turned cowardly. No fair fight. No declared vendetta. While he went to meet one of them, another shot him from ambush. This is the shirt our father wore that day. See where the bullet entered? Why do you turn away? You're a soldier. You're well acquainted with death. Is it because you feel a sense of shame? Or are you beginning to remember that you're a Corsican and that your father has been brutally murdered? I can't stand any more of this. Orso, Orso, listen to me. You are head of the house. I acknowledge it and I beg you. Save us from disgrace. Summon the prefect and reopen the case. No. Please, I implore you. No. And then I was right. What do you mean? I knew you'd refuse to do it. So in your name, I have sent for the prefect. You have sent for the prefect? You must be out of your mind. He is downstairs now, waiting. Then you will come and apologize. Do not move. Monsieur le Préfet, I understand that you were sent for in my name. I assure you, sir, that this was done without my knowledge, and I have brought my sister to apologize. Well, Colomba? Signor Asso, the Baraccini. Orso. We were only too glad to come at the request of Monsieur le Prefect. At the request of the Prefect? If there's any doubt about your father's case, we want it cleared once and for all. My sons and I fear that perhaps Signorina della Rebbia might sow doubt in your mind. I am not criticizing. Such filial piety is very admirable, but perhaps a little dangerous. Arrigo! You will explain to Signor de la Rebbia exactly what happened. The bandit known as Padrino asked me to deliver the letter. I have it here. Yes, that is the one. The bandit Padrino asked me to deliver it to Signor Antonio de la Rebbia, your honored father. This I did. Just a minute, Arrigo. You are a woodcutter, are you not? Yes, Signorina. And were you not working in a wood at the edge of town the day you say Padrino gave you the letter? Yes, yes, Signorina. What time of day was it when Padrino gave you the letter to deliver? N near, N near noon it was. Padrino, with a price on his head, comes to the edge of town at high noon where anybody might see him. Lies, nothing but lies. No, no. I, I am telling the truth. I will kiss the book on it. Also, as we all know, Padrino is a very reckless young man, quite capable of such an act. Your sister, I'm sorry to say, does not seem to understand the rules of evidence. Rules of evidence. Don't you think I know a lie when I hear one? Sister, please. 
Here is the letter. Read for yourself. This seems conclusive enough. The sort of letter that Padrino, who is an educated man, might have written. I beg to differ. Please, gentlemen. No trouble. Colomba, why are these bandits in our house? They are here to help us obtain justice. Arrigo, stand still. There are enough widows and orphans in Corsica. You, Arrigo, come here. Yes, yes, Your Worship. Have you ever held a conversation with me before? Speak up, Arrigo. Yes. It's my oath, honey. You were the one who brought me the letter. You lie! Do not shoot him, Brando. Give him time to remember. Speak up. Repeat what you said in the courtroom. Don't prompt me, Barachin. Repeat it, I say. You know Padrino well. I insist you keep quiet, senor. A fine spectacle, the Barachin is being ordered about by bandits. I'll answer this question. Yes, Your Worship. Have you ever talked with me in your life? No. No, Your Worship. How can a man speak the truth with a knife at his throat? Be quiet. I, I speak the truth. And you lied at the hearings. Perjure yourself. I will send you to prison. I would rather go to prison than die. I, I did not want to lie. I did not want to say those things. I'm an honest man. But the Baracini, they would not let me alone. They tell me I must lie. You little scum! Vincente Baracini. You are the eldest son of the Baracini family. According to custom, I warn you, be on your guard, for I am on mine. I accept your challenge. In another hour, the sun will be up. I'll meet you in the valley of the oak at dawn. At dawn. I shall enter the valley from the south, you from the north. Everyone else will stay away from the valley until one of us returns. Or until we are both assumed to be dead. Agreed. You're not doing this of your own volition. Columba tricked you into it. She opened my eyes. That's not true. She blinded you. If you won't listen to me, listen to the prefect. Give him time to bring the case to trial again. Let the law take its course. The law? French law? No good for Corsicans. That's Columba speaking. Listen to me, I beg of you, or you'll be killed. Your life wasted because of an outmoded savage code. Also, you must make up your mind now. If you persist in this duel... Please. Don't force me to make a choice. I beg of you. You must choose. If you go to the Valley of the Oak, I leave at once. You will never see me again. I must go.
No, or so. Take the mantle. A double barrel gun? Remember, you are dealing with murderers. I know you resent me and what I mean to also, all I stand for. I've known it ever since our first meeting at the Yachtio. My feeling toward you is of no importance. I'm thinking only of my brother. That's all I'm thinking of, some way to stop him. Stop him? We must. He may be shot. Better to be shot than hide indoors as you would have him, behind the skirts of a woman. Columba, this is a mania. We are Corsicans, also, and I. You are a woman of another race. You obviously do not understand. You love him, don't you? Of course I love my brother. Then because you love him, you must prevent this senseless evil meeting. Prevent it? Because I love him, I've prayed for it. Because I love him, I am proud. Never has my brother meant more to me or to any other woman than he does this morning. But that you would never understand. I think I do understand. More than you realize. south of the valley. Jews circle around to your left. I will draw also to the center so you can work in behind him. When he reaches the glades where the grass is not so tall, I will attract his attention. But wait your chance and don't miss.
Where is it, Tico? Alberto has gone to the Valley of the Oak. Two of them will be there now. An ambush for Senor Orso. Swan. Alberto is in the valley, too. You stay here and don't move. No, I'm coming with you. Stay here. separate again. Look for it. Hold your guns over your heads and stand still. Or so are you insane? Kill them. Turn around now. Slowly. Take that finger off the trigger. Hold that gun with one hand. For I beg you, kill them. Can't you see this was no fair fight? They were going to murder you. I cannot shoot men down in cold blood. They shot our father down in cold blood. They deserve to die, and they will die. But 
I intend to take them into Pietranera and show the people what swine they are, what treacherous murderers, a disgrace to all Corsicans. The French will send them to the guillotine. The French? Will you never learn? More trials, more hearings, more lying witnesses. The Maricini will buy their way out. Also, I implore you, kill them before it's too late. Take the guns. Bring them to me. But also can't Colomba! You Take their guns. children. You were my big brother. I always looked up to you and respected you. And loved you so much. And then you went away to war and I did not see you for ten years. Then you returned and you disappointed me. But last night you were reborn. You became a man again. The man I have always... Colomba. strong enough yet to walk. No, wait just a few more minutes. This is all my fault, Padrino. Do not blame yourself, Orso. I am sure you did what you thought was right. No, I did not even do that. What I thought was right was to stay out of this vendetta. I knew that the code of the vendetta is Corsican madness ruin everything that was good and beautiful on this island. And yet I allowed myself to be drawn into the very thing I hated. But once I made that decision, I should have gone through with it. I should have killed the two Baracini when I had the chance. Then Colomba would be alive now. Well, also, what is done is done. You must not lose faith in your beliefs and principles. Maybe we should all follow your creed of law and order. Settle our differences by careful thought and deliberation, instead of with heat and anger. Corsica will never change. Corsica needs to be helped. You were the head of an old respected family with a great deal of influence. In your lifetime, you could accomplish a lot. And your sons after you even more. I know your English girl believes as you do. She could help you. I have no English girl. She has left. You know very little about a woman in love. She is waiting for you. Go back to her. Settle down and live in your home here in Pietranera. You will rule this community. The Baracini family is finished. All Corsica will learn of their shameful treachery. So you see, or so, you can start teaching your beliefs and philosophy here. You must not care if people call you a coward. Many of them will listen to you. They only need a leader. 